Appreciate you spending the next 30 minutes of your time with us on Game Time, free agent favor style. More than 60 deals have reportedly already been reached in just over the first 24 hours of the free agent period. <laughs> We've got NBA champion Channing Fry. We've got a man who once, he says regrettably, traded for Channing Fry. <laughs> former NBA executive Tom Penn. I'm Jared Best Greenberg. Uh, no, no, thankfully, right. we don't have time tonight to go into the details of why Tom <laughs> pulled the trigger on that deal. But at any rate, let's go through some of the big stories on this Saturday. And the big one was after Gordon Hayward opted out of his contract, which would have paid him $34 million this upcoming season with Boston, he goes to a team that he signed an offer sheet with, sheet with back in 2014, the Charlotte Hornets. It could reportedly turn into a sign and trade deal where Boston would ultimately get some cap relief by sending uh, Gordon to Charlotte. But, but that is really not the big story here. We'll get more into Boston in a moment. But first, Channing Fry. Charlotte here, they, they draft LaMelo Ball the other day, and now they give $120 million to Gordon Hayward. Your take. I mean, congratulations to Gordon Hayward. Um, I think when you look at their team and their makeup, I just don't know where this fits in, though. I don't know. For $120 million, that person, if you add a $120 million player, you should automatically be put into the playoffs. And I looked at the, the one through eight, and I don't even have them seven or eight. Just looking at their roster, you're asking Devontae Graham to do a lot. You're asking Cody Zeller to do a lot. And so for me, is Gordon Haywood going to turn back into the all-star he was in 2017 with this really young core? Now, if he does, then okay, maybe. But still, I think 120, uh, you know, everybody during a, this period gets gets paid, and, and he got paid, so congrats. But good luck to the Hornets. I want to see if they make the playoffs this year. All right, Rick Bonello, the Charlotte Observer, is reporting that as part of this deal, uh, the Hornets will sign and stretch Nick Batum. But the other side of this coin here is that Boston loses out on Gordon Hayward. But, Tom, the reports tonight are that they may have finally gotten the center that they've been looking for, Channing's former teammate, Tristan Thompson, as well as a backup point guard, Jeff Teague. Now, a lot of details still need to work out, but... What do you think of what Boston's been able to do here? And clearly they're going to work hard to try and make this a sign and trade with Charlotte to help them out. Well, the Horford deal gives them great cap relief, not cap relief, financial relief. They save a ton of money because they're no longer in the luxury tax. That 30 plus million just goes away. And he wasn't much of a contributor as hurt as he's been. So they replace now with Tristan Thompson. And uh, the reason they may do that sign and trade with Charlotte is in order to get a trade exception where they can then trade Thompson into that via sign and trade. I think they could do it without that. They're trying to maintain a full mid-level exception on top of getting Thompson. So you add Teague in the backcourt, you add Thompson who, look, we've all seen what he can do rebounding the basketball and solidifying the middle, particularly on a playoff team. And they're in go for it mode still. Tatum and Brown really just starting to approach the early part of their prime. Uh, they've lost veteran year after year with Kyrie leaving and Horford and now Hayward, but they continue to be a very relevant team in the East, and Thompson's going to help them quite a bit. All right. So that's the deal from Boston's standpoint. They get out from underneath the money from Gordon Hayward, and it looks like they'll get Tristan Thompson and Jeff Teague, but those details still yet to be worked out. Another big deal that got done on Saturday is the guy that maybe a, half the league would have loved to have, Fred Van Fleet, signs the largest contract for an undrafted player in NBA history. Van Fleet stays with the team he helped win its first title, getting $85 million over four years. Coming up on this edition of Game Time, Doug Smith, beat reporter of the Toronto Star, joins us to discuss Van Fleet staying and how much it means and what else is next for the Raptors. Meanwhile, the Atlanta Hawks continue to do work. Not only did they get Gallinari on day one of free agency, but on day two, look what they do to surround Trey Young in the backcourt. Some defensive-minded guys, some leadership. Rondo coming over from winning a championship with the Lakers, and Chris Dunn, one of the premier perimeter defenders in the league, signed to the Hawks. And there's also reports tonight that the Hawks are still actively pursuing with their cap space Bogdan Bogdanovich, 
who last year played with the Sacramento Kings. So, Channing, what's your take on what Travis Schlank and the Atlanta Hawks have done? Personally, I like it. Personally, I love it. I think Trey Young is a special talent. Um, they've seen enough. They know what they need to surround him with. If Rondo is healthy, he's bringing leadership, preparedness, expectations to win every night. Gallinari's been a pro. When he's healthy, he's very dangerous. He's a matchup problem. You saw what he did in OKC. Chris Dunn is a steady guard. Um, obviously, he's going to help them on the defensive end. And the fact that they're going for it is putting pressure on, on uh, Trey Young that, hey, you're an all-star now. Now we need you to win. You showed us as one of the 20 best players in the NBA. We need you to win, and we're going to surround. And you have the other guys that they drafted last year. Uh, depending on what happens with Collins, I like this team. Uh, again, I have them in that bunched-up group with the Orlando Magic, uh, the Hawks, the Wizards. In Chicago, is that team buying for that eight, seventh, and eighth spot? And, and Tom, Travis Lang still has some money to play with. Yeah, this is one of those situations looking at the year. Would they have enough? talent to fill up all that cap space they had. They've done a pretty nice job here. You know, Gallinari's a terrific locker room guy. Rondo's really hit or miss. You don't know what you're going to get. Remember what happened down in Dallas. Things can go haywire with him. <laughs> they gave him quite a bit of money. So, uh, you know, you just, you don't know which Rondo you're going to get. But uh, for them, when you look last year, you know, all the production for the Hawks came out of their youth, which is what you want when you're trying to build. And then they add to that youth with Okongwu. So they've got all their hope and promise for the future in building everything around Trey Young. Well, it's time to bolster Trey Young and his brilliance and Collins and Hunter and all the other reddish, the young talent they have with this veteran mix that Channing did a great job of describing. So it's a nice next step to get them legit and get them into the playoffs. Uh, and then see if their greatness can evolve to where they can be really interesting in a couple of years. Uh, nice to see teams being aggressive and going forward, even if it doesn't mean championship or bust. It means, as Channing said, vying for that playing round of the playoffs at seven or eight in the Eastern Conference. Let's go back to the Western Conference, another former teammate of Channing Fry, Carmelo Anthony, signing another one year deal with the Blazers. Channing. We could never have imagined a year ago how good of a fit this was. Why do you think Melo agreed to take another one-year deal to remain with the Blazers? I think what what they've done here with the Blazers, obviously I live in Oregon, so I've watched a lot of it, and it's this leadership. They allow him to have the voice. They run specific plays for him, and he's the third guy. So for him, the pressure's not on to always get 25, 20 a game. Certain games, he's gonna get 10, and if he's rolling, He's going to get his shots. They're going to look for him. Damian Lillard and CJ need him, not only in the locker room, they need him on a court with his uh, just his sense of calm and, and situations. That's some huge shots for the Blazers. So adding him and then adding Ronnie Hunt, Derek Jones Jr., adding Enes Cantor, some more vets, the Blazers are always going to go for it as long as Damian Lillard is their point. Great offseason in the world for a basketball player. I'm proud to be a Laker. Feels weird that that was uh, just about six weeks ago the Lakers crowned champs. And we've got uh, just over a month until the next season starts and the Lakers are making moves. I mean, Rob Palenka, he is not sitting on his hands. Take a look at what they've done over the last couple of days. Adding in Schroeder, Wesley Matthews, Montrez Harrell. They continue to get better at looks, uh, getting rid of uh, Danny Green, Dwight Howard, Rondo, and Avery Bradley as well. Let, let's bring back in Channing Cry and Tom Penn. Uh, Channing, are the Lakers better today than they were almost six weeks ago in game six when they clinched title number 17? Not even close. Absolutely. They are better because now this team is built for the next two or three years. If something happened to Braun, Schroeder's a starter. Montrezl Harrell plays starter minutes. Right, Wesley Matthews plays starter minutes. All of these guys are winners and have opportunities to really make impact on this team. And so that's what's dangerous. It's like, and, I, and I'm best friends with Braun, and I called him and said, how the heck did y'all do this? Like, what? Yeah. This is unfair because if Braun plays 32 or less minutes, he is dangerous, especially at this age. You can take him out and put Schroeder in and put Montrez Harrell in. That's a nasty, not only defensively, but that's a nasty screen and roll. And don't add AD or KCP in there. It's just like, okay, now you just added a, a you taken away the greatest player of our generation, and you still have a top three team in both in both divisions. 
Tom, your thoughts? Exactly right. I mean, they got quite a bit better. They got younger, they got more energetic, and they got different. The hardest thing in repeating is just coming back with the same old story, same old show. You always need to change some of the players. Well, Rondo's at the end, and you've got the Rondo replacement. I mean, from the beginning, Schroeder's always really reminded so many people of Rondo, except he can really shoot the ball. And then Montrez Harrell is just energy, effort, you know, grit, grind. And that's what they're going to need as they come back and look to repeat. You get that kind of explosive ability coming off the bench, six man of the year. Plus, you took him out of the locker room right down the hallway, and they're your biggest rival. So just been a brilliant 48 hours for the Lakers. And uh, they still have room to go. You saw those question marks on the screen. They're going to fill those in with quality <laughs> ring chasers. They're going to get yeah. more shooting. They'll get another wing defender. They're going to get some things that make a difference. Uh, it's really, really been an impressive 48 hours for them. Channing, since you already name dropped that LeBron is your best friend, uh, let's go inside your brain here and, and take advantage of this relationship. How do you see him managing this season with the condensed off season? I think, to be honest, I don't know if he ever really had an off season. You know, even when we won in 2016, a week later, he was already riding on the bike, taking care of his body. That's one thing about that man is uh, his dedication to this craft. And I think, you know, you saw him with his, you know, four, the number four up. This guy wants as many rings as he could possibly get and is always going to do what's best for himself, his body, and his team. So right now he's probably in some cryo chamber, eating some vegan food, working out late night, doing whatever he needs to do for him to be ready. But he also knows how long the season is, and he's also – surrounded himself and Rob surrounded him with players if he needs to be on a minute restriction for the first month. Probably drinking some of that new Channing Fry wine that he got. None of us Ooh, got. I hope so. Listen. <laughs> Let's talk about more Saturday moves, fellas. Whip around here and mention Avery Bradley, who goes from the Lakers to the Heat, inking a two-year $11 million deal. Jimmy Butler reportedly played an active role in recruiting Bradley to the Heat. Remember, Bradley, a big piece for the Lakers last season. However, he opted not to enter the bubble due to family health concerns. Miami also added defensive stopper Mo Harkless, and the Heat got about a bargain relatively speaking, one year, 3.6 million. This will be his fifth team in nine seasons last year. Harkless split time with the Clippers and Knicks. The East champs did lose Jay Crowder. He signed with Phoenix, the Suns putting in work. Crowder got 29 million over three years from the Suns. Also uh, a well-traveled player. The Suns will be Crowder's seven. Van Fleet gets a wide open look, pucks it in. Fred Van Fleet. 22 points off the bench as Golden State calls timeout. Well, Fred needed to see another look of that clutch three to put the Raptors up mm. by three with under four minutes to go. Pascal, you're loving this one, huh? Mm, mm, <laughs> nah, that was a big shot. I remember that like yesterday. It's crazy. Yeah, that's that. That's that step back. Come here. Step back. Come oh, here. Excuse me. Where are you going? Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Yo, I'm right here. <laughs> Shout out to Quinn Cook. That's my man. But uh, yeah, I need. I needed that. But as we all look for silver linings throughout this year that's been a mess, it was the opportunity to do shows like that that we did at the very start of the NBA hiatus during the, the, the pandemic when we got the opportunity to relive the 2019 NBA Finals, clinching Game 6 with Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Fleet, who were so kind to give us their time. Two really good guys. And on this day, Fred Van Fleet gets rewarded with an $85 million contract to stay in Toronto, as we told you about at the top of the show. But let's go a little more in depth with what's going on with the Raptors, the state of the squad with veteran beat reporter Doug Toronto star Doug we appreciate your time here I think to start here with Fred there, there's two angles number one there's the richest contract for an undrafted player in NBA history and then there's the Canada angle here where yet another player has decided to stay with a franchise where for a long time that wasn't the case so let, let's start with with Fred and and we watched those 2019 NBA Finals with him. That's really where he earned his money and why he was so valuable, not just to the Raptors, but on the entire free agent market. Yeah, you know, Jared, you're absolutely right. That, that's the interesting thing about that playoff run to the Finals. 
in a Philly series, he couldn't make a shot and they couldn't play him that much. He, he just learned how to shoot during the playoffs from a little bit deeper, create a little more space for himself to get a shot off, and he sort of rocketed forward from that time on. That, that game six, you know, everybody talks about Kawhi Leonard and Kyle Lowry and Kyle's first, had the first 16 points or whatever it was. That, that fourth, second half and fourth quarter that Fred Van Vliet had in game six was an absolute clinic. He made every big shot he took, hard shots contested, and was he was the difference in the deciding game of an NBA final. So, yeah, that 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 got him on the radar, and then he had a good year this year. And I'm really really glad he got paid because, as I said earlier, you like good things to happen to good people, and Fred's a good guy. Yeah, and you know, for a long time, as I mentioned, the the Raptors. Um, reputation was they could they could get a star by way of draft or by trade but but they couldn't keep him that all changed with DeMar DeRozan he decided to stay and then Kyle Lowry decided to stay how, how significant is it for the future of a franchise that now a guy like Fred Van Fleet who was arguably the most sought after guard on the free agent market electing to take the money and and stay with the Raptors well you know Jared, it's what it's what they've done since well, it's what they've done since almost since Dwayne Casey got here in 2012, 2011. They, they have a consistent uh, winning record on the floor. They're getting, they got better all those years in a row until they won the title. And now that they're winning, players want to be with winning programs. And Mazzari Jerry and Bobby Webster have sort of installed this, I hate to use the word culture because it's thrown around so loosey-goosey, but that's what it is. So they got, they've, they're hardworking, good guys, and the Raptors have shown they'll take care of their own. And I think that resonates in the league and it resonates with players. They gave Kyle Lowry a $31 million one-year contract extension a year ago as a thank you for winning the championship, basically. They didn't have to do it, but they did. And I think players notice that, and they're going to notice guys like Fred, Cade, DeMar signed two contract extensions, Kyle signed two contract extensions, and it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. The Raptors will take care of their best players and pay them market value. And, Doug, they're not done. What's the latest you're hearing on the recruiting pitch to Serge Ibaka? Well, I would be surprised. I'm hearing, and I would be surprised if they went beyond one year. They, they want to save cap space, max cap space for that 2021 class like everybody in the NBA does. They will pay him substantial money in a one-year deal. But I don't think he'll, they'll go to the two. I, we haven't heard from Serge ever about what he looks for. Does he want a four-year deal or does he want a chance to win a championship or stay where he's familiar? But frankly, there's not a lot of money out there for him. The Clippers with the full mid-level to get him to four years, I think, $39 million. Um, that might be amenable to him. But even that, that's a, that's a 50% pay cut over what he made this year. And I'm not sure how that... With breaking news, Sham Shrani of The Athletic and Stadium reporting that Serge Abaka has agreed to a deal with the Clippers. We were wondering what the Clippers would do. They finally land a relative big name here. We're back with much more on this. 